Hello and welcome to the presentation on the 4A IT Risk Management Framework. My name is Pranav Shah and I'm a Senior IT Risk and Security Analyst. I'm also a CISSP and a CISA and have several years experience in the areas of IT risk, controls and security. In this presentation, I'm going to provide an overview of the 4A IT Risk Management Framework, which is based on the book IT Risk, Turning Business Threats into Competitive Advantage by Westerman and Hunter. My primary purpose of this presentation is to educate the listeners on this 4AIT risk management framework so that they may consider, consider implementing this framework within their organizations as part of the IT risk management efforts. Now to begin with, let's review the three main causes of IT risk. Number one is ineffective IT governance. What this means is there's an absence of appropriate structures and processes for business involvement in IT investments and decisions. Now, without appropriate business involvement in IT decision making, IT managers can make incorrect assumptions about which risks matters most to the business. Additionally, as a side note, I also want to mention here that IT organizations are typically structured to be closer to the business and are inherently motivated to respond to business requests as quickly as possible rather than to take an enterprise-wide view of IT decisions. Although each locally optimized decision may be entirely justifiable, the agility risks implicit in such decisions can rise to levels that could have negative consequences to the organizations. The second cause of IT risk is uncontrolled complexity in IT infrastructure and applications. Now complexity per se may not increase IT risk, but complexity without solid engineering increases risk in many ways. Additionally, complex environments that are not carefully engineered tend to be fragile. And finally, the third cause of IT risk is inattention to risk by individuals and organizations which results in risk taking without the corresponding mitigating factors. The symptoms of inattention to risk could be several including missing knowledge due to layoffs or, reti or retiring personnel, high infrastructure failure rates and long recovery times, or employee ignorance, negligence or malfeasance. So now that we know the causes of IT risk, there needs to be some way to manage these risks. Westerman and Hunter suggest an approach to managing these IT risks by their 4A IT risk management framework. So let's review what the A's in the 4A IT risk management framework mean. The first is availability. Availability means keeping the systems running and recovering from interruptions. Access. Access means access to systems and data is provided to the right people and denied to the wrong people. Accuracy. Accuracy means systems have correct, timely and complete information. And finally, agility, which means capability to change systems with managed cost and speed. I want to highlight here that the 4A IT risk management framework adds the concept of agility to the well-known information security concept of confidentiality, integrity and availability. So now that we know what the A's mean in the 4A IT risk management framework, let's review the three core disciplines of effective IT risk management. The three core disciplines are, number one, a well-structured IT foundation of IT assets, people, and supporting processes. Number two, a well-designed risk governance process to identify, prioritize, and track risks. And finally, the number three, a risk-aware culture in which people understand causes and solutions for IT risks and are comfortable discussing risks. So let's delve into more detail on each of these three disciplines of effective IT risk management. We'll begin with the first discipline on IT foundation. The IT foundation is basically a collection of IT assets, procedures and people that support and enable the business processes and decision making. The IT, fo IT foundation includes the infrastructure components like servers, operating systems and databases. It also includes the applications that support the business processes such as financial reporting systems or ERP systems. The IT foundation also includes people with skills to manage the IT foundation and processes and procedures for monitoring, controlling and maintaining the IT assets to keep them running smoothly. 
So what are the benefits of having a strong IT foundation? A strong IT foundation results in less IT operational problems and when problems do occur, they are quickly and easily diagnosed and repaired. Also, it becomes easier to assess risks and to maintain and make changes to the infrastructure and applications which have a solid IT foundation. Clearly, there are several benefits of having a strong IT foundation and it is evident that a weak IT foundation can amplify IT risks. So how do, how do we go about building a strong IT foundation? Clearly, fixing the IT foundation is a journey. And the first step in this journey is to examine the foundation and implement basic controls to ensure that there are no major weaknesses waiting to become catastrophes and to implement recovery procedures in the event of a failure. Secondly, having skilled IT personnel, robust and documented IT processes and procedures also helps in building a strong IT foundation. Now fixing the IT foundation also includes reducing the complexity in the infrastructure and applications. Clearly, reducing the complexity of the infrastructure and applications is a separate, is a separate topic by itself and is out of the scope of this discussion. Instead, we'll focus on implementing an effective IT risk governance process in this presentation.